Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all well and thriving in this new year. For the longest time I really didn't understand the concept of feminine energy and when I finally did and I mastered it, it completely transformed my life and in particular my dating life and I think it's crucial for women everywhere to understand. So this video is going to be your ultimate guide to mastering all things to do with feminine energy. Habits, dating, lifestyle, healing, general tips. By the end of this video you will fully understand it and know how to live that lifestyle None of the tips I'm about to give in this video have anything to do with you chasing a man, obsessing over men, making them the center of your universe, working to impress them. Because in this corner of the internet, we're all about growing your self-love first and foremost. And when you're ready to date, you are gonna pick the man, okay, from your roster. You are not waiting for them to pick you. And finally, feminine energy is all about mastering self-love and self-care. It's about loving yourself to the point where you choose yourself in every single situation so you never have to deal with low value experiences ever again. So let's jump right into the video, your ultimate guide to mastering feminine energy. Feminine energy is free flowing, it's not restricted by any rules and it's all about receiving and releasing control. Feminine energy is fluid, it's about focusing on nurture, feeling your feelings, being expressive, living a soft life, expressing all of your emotions and focusing on fulfillment over productivity. Now a lot of people think feminine energy and femininity are the same thing and it's not and this is where a lot of confusion can happen with the actual definition of feminine energy and this is why a lot of people don't know how to do it as well. Femininity regards girly girl qualities. Feminine energy has nothing to do with that. Feminine energy does not care about how you dress, whether you're a tomboy or a girly girl, it doesn't matter what you are. Feminine energy is a way of being, it's a way of having a certain set of standards, it's a way of carrying yourself and presenting yourself. Femininity is more about having your nails painted, having the best makeup, presenting yourself as the ideal girly girl woman. So, divine feminine traits are being compassionate, nurturing, trusting, open, creative, strong-minded and authentic. She is proud of who she is and she also sets strong boundaries and she honors them. They are non-negotiables. This also links to her high level of confidence, self-love and self-care because she makes all of those things a priority when she's living her life. Her self-perception, sense of self and the foundation she has been built within herself is so strong, nothing else can shake that because she's done so much inner work on self-love. Benefits of feminine energy and how it gets you a high value man. AKA, we're gonna be talking all about your newfound dating habits. Feminine energy when dating is all about not catering to the needs of a man, not obsessing over him, not stressing about impressing him, not dressing for him, not doing your makeup towards his preferences. You are doing all of those things for yourself. You are not pandering to every need of what the man wants. You are not focused on earning their affection or attention or worrying about how you're perceived by them. You believe that you are that girl and of course they like you. It doesn't matter what outfit I wear tonight, how I do my hair or what sort of makeup look I decide to do. He is going to like and appreciate me no matter what because of the woman I am. This is all so important because you need to step into the new mindset that you are out here to pick the man, not for you to beg to be picked by a man. Because when you engage in those behaviors of trying to impress a man, and no hate to you, I used to do that. Naturally, a lot of women just tend to have that behavior because we're not taught any other way, okay? So if you've been doing that up until this point, it's okay, girl, it's okay but no more. So if you're trying to impress a man, pandering to their need, trying to be the easygoing, chill girlfriend that does everything for him, this is where you attract feminine men. Men that wanna do the whole 50-50, men that don't have a provider mentality, men that want you to mother them, and you are never gonna get your soft life or princess treatment that way. Instead, this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna focus on living your best single life, focus on your self-development, growing, meeting new people, traveling, exploring, doing what you love to do, spending time on your hobbies, being happy and flourishing in life alone without having to rely or be attached to somebody else. When you are doing this and vibrating at this frequency, the real masculine men, not the feminine ones, are going to come and seek you out because you're going to be re radiating this amazing energy. Real masculine men are attracted to those women. Those women who are out here living their lives, they don't care about men, they don't want to impress them. They're so solid in who they are, they're so confident, they're so full of self-love. That's what a masculine man wants. That he just wants to be in a relationship with her for her energy and to look after her. And I get comments from girls on social media sometimes saying, you know, it's easy for you to say that you can have this soft life and blah, 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 or I'm not pretty enough to have those sort of health Healthy relationships with masculine men who want to pander to every one of my needs. No, it's got nothing to do with your physical appearance, but it has 
everything to do with your aura and the energy that you are giving off. If you are insecure, if you are needy, if you are clingy, masculine men are gonna seek that out and it's gonna turn them off and they're gonna go elsewhere. Feminine men are gonna be hella attracted to you and wanna waste your time and get you to look after them because they know they can take advantage of you. The rule that I and so many others live by is the less you give, the more you will receive. This is just in the beginning of dating, okay? This does not apply if you are in a long-term relationship with somebody. Of course, the efforts and everything should be more reciprocated then. But in the beginning stages, when you are on your first few dates with a man, he should be chasing you, he should be courting you, he should be the gentleman. You don't have to do a lot. In the beginning, it is all down to him to impress you and to win you over because you are the prize. If you are not in the obsessive role, he steps into the chaser role and that's what you want. You are a woman in her divine feminine. You are acting like the prize because you are one. So now he is gonna do the most to win over your affections. He'll plan the dates, he'll open the car doors, he'll get you flowers, he'll court you properly like a gentleman as he should. And if you start mothering a man and pandering to his needs, you are already giving him every single thing he wants. He will never change for you. He will never step up. He will never grow with you. And he'll never give you the life and the treatment that you deserve. Let's compare feminine versus masculine energy. This is so you that you can understand the balance of these very important energies in a romantic relationship so that you can find the right masculine partner to give yourself life in a relationship. For example, the feminine is all about receiving. Her worth is attached to who she is. Feminine is all about just being, whereas the masculine is all about doing and providing. His worth and sense of achievement is connected to his accomplishments and the actions that he's taking, his successes. The feminine communicates her problems and expresses her emotions. The masculine works to fix that problem and provide her with the solution. The feminine is submissive. She surrenders control so that she can be taken care of. The masculine is dominant. He takes control. He makes the plan. He is the decisive one. Now that we've done this comparison, I want to take this opportunity to say 50-50 is BS. And let me just make this clear, by no means am I talking about effort because majority of the men who will comment on social media or preach about things should be 50-50. They claim they're talking about effort, but they're not. Men respond with the phrase, oh, but it should be 50-50, when women with high standards, as they should, say things like, he should pay on the first date, he should plan the dates, he should get me flowers, he should be a gentleman, etc. Men then respond with 50-50 because they're coming from a place of, oh, but why can't you get me flowers? Why can't you get me gifts, you know? We should split the bill. If I take, if I cover the bill this week, you should cover the bill the next week. Men have literally responded to women saying that they want doors to be opened for them with, but you have your own hands, why can't you do it? That's what men mean when they say 50-50. So by no means am I talking about effort because really effort should be 100-100 always, especially once you're in the relationship stage. I'm a big believer in that. But the reason you should never ever allow the 50-50 mentality is because that cancels out provider mentality. A real masculine man with a provider mentality would never give you the 50-50 argument because it's not true. He is not looking at this in, in a place of, I'm gonna give you this, so now I wanna receive something back, which is what all the 50-50 men talk about. He's happy to give to you, and he's happy for you to receive, because that's what the energies and the roles should look like. What a woman who's living in her masculine energy looks like. Quick disclaimer, if this is you, and you've been living with these traits, by no means am I bashing you, or am I saying this is a bad thing. I lived with these traits for a very long time. I don't think having these traits is a negative thing. I'm just saying, by definition, it does not fit into the category of feminine energy, and also, if you primarily only have these traits, okay, and you're always expressing these traits on none of the feminine energy ones, then it's less likely that you're going to be able to be in a relationship with a masculine man who wants to provide for you because the masculine traits that women have block that out from their life. Okay, so a woman in her masculine has the following traits. Competitiveness, aggression, dominance, you know, the feminine is submissive. She, she relaxes, okay? She gives away her control. She's like, you can book the flights, you can do this and she just wants her soft life. She's not worrying about, I have to make all the plans and look after everybody else all the time. A woman in her masculine also neglects things like self-care so that she can chase hustle culture instead. She's probably more analytical and logical and doesn't tune in to her woman's intuition and her gut feelings and trusting herself. She's very overly independent. She doesn't like to ask anybody for help. She doesn't like to rely on anybody. She possibly might have an avoidant attachment style. She's like very much, I only need myself and that was me for the longest time and it wasn't until I worked on those traits and kind of worked backwards to get to a secure attachment that I could finally upgrade my dating life and get better treatment from men. Why does this happen? Why is a woman in her masculine energy? It's because you're suffering from wounded feminine energy and that is what's leading to low value dating experiences. And a lot of people get this confused with, okay, but how do I tap into the feminine energy? 
It's not something that needs to be tapped into. It's already all within you. You just need to allow it into your life. You need to allow yourself to express it and to step into that role, which can be hard to get rid of that control, to let other people take the wheel and just sit back and receive can be so difficult, especially because so many women um, in their families are raised to not be in that role. So it might not feel natural for you to step into this feminine energy, but practice makes perfect. It's already within you, so believe that first. It's not something you need to acquire. So why would a woman be living in her masculine energy? Chances are it's because you are in survival mode. Maybe you've had a past heartbreak. Maybe you're doing the whole hustle culture thing. But ultimately, it's because you're trying to protect yourself. And you're focusing on that instead of living freely, which is the feminine lifestyle, and abundantly without worry. So let's talk about the signs that you are in your wounded feminine. Your insecure needy, clingy, codependent, you have an insecure attachment style, you feel like you need others and you attach yourself to them instead of choosing them and picking them through your own standards. You, you will attach yourself to anybody because you need that support and you haven't kind of built your sense of self and confidence yet. You're in your wounded feminine if you manipulate, if you're passive aggressive, instead of just openly communicating and allowing yourself to not only feel your feelings, but express them openly and allow others to help you through it. You're in your wounded feminine if you are inauthentic and you're constantly trying to fit in to gain acceptance from other people, if you have a victim mentality. A lot of feminine energy has to do with lucky girl syndrome and affirming to yourself that you're that girl and everything you want is on its way to you. Everything in your life it, you are abundant with, okay? Anything you want, you can set out to achieve and it's possible for that to come into your reality. If you are in a victim mindset, if you're constantly complaining, criticizing, you feel like, but I can't do anything or I'm not intelligent enough or this isn't realistic, that's not feminine energy. Not taking time to rest and indulge in self-care, not treating yourself without feeling guilty about it, trying to control every aspect of your life because you don't have the abundance mindset yet, you being so busy, doing so many things and trying to achieve so many things that you forget to just be and you also try to link your self-worth to external achievements maybe it's grades your self-worth is just you who you are just you being is worthy enough and lovable and desirable enough how do we achieve this lifestyle to gain more and what are these feminine energy habits? We say yes to meditation, vulnerability, self-love and self-care, communication, expressing your feelings to the man and being open, setting your boundaries and honoring them, being strong-minded, not letting people mess with you, having high standards, knowing that you're worthy for just being, being confident in your authenticity, taking time to recharge and allowing yourself to not only have someone else give you the soft life, but you're already giving yourself the soft life, okay? You're all about having an easy lifestyle being abundant, not trying to unnecessarily make things harder for yourself, which a lot of the time many of us do without even realizing. And what we say no to, suppressing feelings, being passive aggressive, people pleasing, prioritizing other people's needs, overworking yourself, being overly restrictive and not allowing yourself to have a break, and attaching your worth to external things or achievements rather than knowing you are worthy just as you are. What does a feminine lifestyle look like every day and how are you now going to strike the balance between your feminine energy and your masculine energy because you can't just be 100% feminine energy you do need your masculine energy as well I love being analytical and working hard and chasing my dreams and making money and being a boss and being independent and looking out for myself first and foremost without having to rely on others I love that I'm proud of myself for having those qualities and you should too by also bringing the feminine qualities to balance it out and make sure that I'm also in my receiving role from time to time as well one instead of trying to control every aspect of your environment to get results lucky girl syndrome start manifesting get a vision board and write down your goals and affirm to yourself that they are achievable everything is abundant you'll be vibrating so much higher the energy that you're radiating that other people can sense will be so much better that way you have that ambition from the masculine but in a feminine process too instead of always overworking yourself putting pressure on yourself to work hard and achieve actually schedule make it a priority and make time in your schedule for self-care to recharge to just have a day where you rest this way you're still being productive and working towards your dreams while still doing the feminine energy thing of prioritizing yourself your self-care this is one of my 2023 resolutions every sunday is self-care sunday for me i'm not allowed to work i'm not allowed to spend the whole day on social media i can do a hair mask i can do my skincare i'll give myself a manicure and then I can watch TV all day or read a book or learn something new and just 
relax and just be and that's okay. Three, instead of going through a difficult situation and sad emotions and then just trying to move on so you can be more productive and just move on in life and not be an emotional wreck or like a super emotional sensitive woman as if that's a bad thing because it's not. You're gonna feel your feelings, you're gonna journal, meditate, take a walk or talk to someone. It's okay to ask for help, it's okay to express your emotion. This means no more suppressed emotions, you'll be more happier, more at peace, you'll be able to have that practice of leaning on other people because they're there to help you. You can receive more and you'll be less burnt out, meaning You'll be able to be more productive, just like the masculine energy side, but you're having those feminine energy traits of asking other people to help. And I want my last point to be, the ultimate balance, the perfect balance between your feminine and masculine energy comes from looking after yourself. The second you start engaging in self-sacrificing or self-abandoning practices, your energies are gonna be all over the place and you're not gonna be feeling your best. And remember, you can chase your dreams and have a soft life at the same time as well. And that brings us to the end of this video. That was your ultimate guide to feminine energy. I hope this video helped and you took something new away from this video. If it did, make sure you give it a thumbs up and comment down below. Let me know what you thought or comment any new video suggestions. Make sure you subscribe because I make videos every single week and I will see you in the next one. Bye.